Hey, I'm Carmelo Parsaliti. I'm the founder of Green Acres Organic Farms. We are a industrial hemp processor, so we're licensed by the Agricultural Department of Alabama and we work with local Alabama cannabis farmers. We take their crop from farm to pharmacy. We make complete ready retail products and uh, we also build brands for farmers to sell their own brands, build their own e-commerce site. We do a lot of white labeling with doctors and pharmacies. So, oh, We're also the, uh, the first hydrocarbon extractor in Alabama. So. I guess licensed in Alabama. So. Well, I saw an article, me and my dad were having some coffee and uh, he showed me the newspaper. He said, hey, check this out. And it said, hey, you know, the 2018 federal farm bill was signed, which gave states the rights to do what we're doing now. I said, I want to do that. I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be our, our stepping stone into medicinal and recreational and all these other aspects of cannabis and uh, I truly believe in, in what we're doing and I, I really think it can help a lot of people um, if used correctly and uh, but yeah we uh, we were talking having coffee I said I want to I want to do this and uh, you know I, I started out I wanted to be a be a farmer and grow it and my dad kind of looked at me and said man you know the the people who who I can, I don't know if this, this is the right way to say it, but he said the people who got rich during the gold rush were the people selling the, uh, the axes and the shovels. You know, you should try to just work with what, others, what are, was already out there. And it turns out there's a, you know, a whole lot of farmers, very little processors. Um, but yeah, we, uh, he said you should go check out the, I had no idea this place even existed, the Shoals Business Incubator. And uh, he said you should go check that out because they have all kind of warehouse space and stuff. And went over to Giles, met him told him what I wanted to do and he was like just so um, supportive of our idea and he was like, oh, you know, this is great, I want to see you succeed and, and you know, three years later here we are, we have an awesome business, we work with a lot of farmers, we have our own e-commerce brand, um, we work markets, we have a great customer base, all organic customer base, we really can't advertise or anything, but uh, yeah, it was just, it started with an idea and then you just put some action behind it and uh, a lot of failures along the way, but yeah, this is where we're at now. There's a whole bunch of roadblocks from just trying to find a bank to work with us. Getting laughed out of banks was hard because of the industry we were in. Um, finally got a bank account for our for our corporation. Uh, I'm trying to think of one, one of big, a big setback. Uh, we almost closed down the business in um, 2020 in the middle of COVID. It was very slow. You know, it took us, I think it took us a year and a half to get um, like a hundred customers, which is so bad, not good, you know. And just in this past, in the past month of May, we had a hundred new customers just in that month. So we were, we were ready to close down the business in 2020, and uh, basically, I was, it was a last-ditch effort. I was walking around downtown, giving out flyers, talking, just trying to drum up any kind of conversation about it. Ran into a Times Daily reporter. They did a little article about us and kind of gave us a little boost. And then from there, things just started rolling. And uh, we got to give a give a bottle to the governor, Kay Ivey. She uh, she wrote us a letter thanking us for it. That was cool. We got to run into her at a farmer's market. And I mean, it's not every day you get to give the governor your product that you made from scratch. So that was a, that was a cool moment. So what we do, basically we start with the plant, which you know the scientific term is cannabis sativa. So every, all, all the categories, whether it be industrial hemp, you know, that's still from the cannabis sativa. You know, people who call it marijuana pot, that's slang for cannabis sativa. Medicinal and recreational, those are just different product and testing and taxes categories. But basically what we do is we take Alabama grown cannabis that is below, it's before we can even get it to our facility, the state tests it to be below 0.3% Delta 9 THC. And uh, they bring us that crop. We then, we have an extraction lab. So, we have uh, a hydrocarbon closed loop extractor where basically you run a you know a chilled solvent. We use like isobutane, um, a lab grade solvent. We use that as a uh, as a solvent to wash over it. And it, as it washes over that cannabis, it pulls out all of the cannabinoids and the essential oils that are inside that plant. Um, after that point, we then will recapture those hydrocarbons um, with a with a with a pump put it back to where it came from, and then you're left with this crude oil. And we run the crude oil through a short path distillation unit or a white film distillation unit after winterizing and filtering it. 
and uh, basically we're making CB we're, we're making high concentrated CBD oil um, we have the most we have the highest concentrated most affordable in the nation but um, yeah it goes through this refinement process and uh, after that you know the state only requires us to test it for Delta 9 THC but we kind of mirror what medicinal states do so we we test it for microbials, hydro, um, residual solvents, heavy metals, pesticides, the stuff that has negative long-term effects on your health. And um, so we do, we do full panel testing on all of our products and it's, uh, it's really cool seeing customers come to you and like, you know, just telling you how it's helping them. And you know, FDA claimer, I'm a, I'm a chemist, not a doctor, you know, we don't, we can't say this is going to cure or help or treat anything but when customers are coming and telling us hey it's helping with our parkinson's or it's helping us with cancer you know um it's it reassures that i'm i'm doing the right things so one of the best parts about owning your own business is the freedom that comes with it that freedom is you can hang yourself with it if you're not careful but you know you get you get more time with your family and that's the whole that's the that's the that's a really rewarding part and the the most rewarding part is having a customer come to you and tell you how it's helped them or a family member or you know help somebody who was suffering with something that's like that's that's what it's all about so you know if you have a passion that can help people you're never gonna go broke and you'll never run out of business so I think everybody thinks that you get to sit back and just put your feet up and armchair like it's not it's like especially in the beginning it's it's you're doing everything so like you'll have 40 different hats from janitor to uh you know president to to you know because the, at the beginning you usually don't have capital to to pay all these other people to do this stuff and then when you do start having revenue come in you're like well i was doing this all by myself already do i want to you know so it's like you gotta it's, it's a big misconception that it's like it's, it's super easy to run a business but um sometimes it is sometimes it isn't you just gotta do it do not do not be afraid to fail the, the best thing i think that was ever told to me was um, if you're going to fail, do it. Fail often. Fail as quick as possible and pick yourself back up and just learn from it. Don't let it just be a complete failure. Learn from why you failed. Go back to the drawing board and hit it again. So don't ever just fall down once and just go back home. That's the, the biggest t takeaway from this is there should be no job beneath you. There should be no job beneath you. And that's the only way you're ever going to learn and succeed is if you never do any of those jobs, you're never going to, you're never going to know what it's like to, to enjoy what you have and, and make it. I mean, it's like, it takes a mentality. So learn it all and do it all and protect the people who do it. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. If you have any source of revenue, you should get a job early on too. I mean, just to learn responsibility, but invest in yourself. You know, you can invest money in yourself and make a lot more in return versus putting a new stereo in your car, or putting, jacking up your truck or, you know, you know, so like invest in yourself and uh, learn, learn as much as you can, read as much as you can and just go for it go for it don't lie. i mean you're all in you're all in no matter what we get one life to live so where you're at right now you're all in so make the most of it go find a mentor find somebody that you want to do like oh man i, lo I really want to do that go find a small business not go to, don't go to a chain you know go to a small business that whatever it might be talk to the owner say hey i, I want to do this someday they would be like Come on, I need some help doing this, this, and this. Come learn it, you know? And it's, uh, ask. Just ask somebody in that field. And that's, they're in that field because that's most likely what they wanted to do. Some, not always, but most time. And they love sharing their passion. And it's all about passing on the knowledge to like the next generation. So thank God every day and uh, spend time with your family. You don't know how long they're there.